water is good. Right. I, I, is this tap water or is this uh, bottled water? I, uh, nice. I, I don't even care. I, I, I it still has bubbly. Water. His has bubbles. Mine's flat. Oh. This one's Perrier. They know. Oh, Perrier. <laughs> right. well, you're good. You want to do the hands? Right. You said something interesting there where, you know, players, um, and I've heard this recently, where um, they see an event like uh, the Black Sheep event and they say, well, we're not ready. And um, I, say, I, I have to basically challenge those people that say that because I don't think you, you're ever ready for this kind of an experience without gaining the experience of it. Um, you could read all you want about the events, you could talk to veterans about the events, uh, all that I did. Um, but, you know, I, I, if I said I, when I went to my first Black Sheep event, um, I think I had my gear for maybe a three month period. If I said I wasn't ready, then I could say that as an excuse every year, every time an event came up. Um, as it turns out, I was playing with a team that had some experience and um, I, I was ready and I was surprised with myself and that was one of the things that, um, that you find out with this kind of an experience. It really challenges you to the core of what you are as a, as a person um, and um, it's just an added value to it. So. Anytime someone says, well, you know, we just started or um, I don't think I'm ready. Well, okay, well, maybe you don't have the equipment that some of these cool kids have, but you don't Very need it true. to get started. You know, you, you have to start somewhere and, and there's so much stuff out there that you will drive yourself insane and have zero cash in your checking account if you continue to just buy things that you think you need, you need to go out there and see what you have to have to get through an event like a Black Sheep event. And uh, you have to go to one, you really do. I mean, anyone out there that considers themselves a Milsim player or an Airsofter that wears all the Gucci gear, it, it doesn't mean anything until you do an event like this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you see that, you know, when I went to the first, when I went to Black Pine Plains 5, I remember I had the mentality, it's like, okay, I'm going to need this, I'm going to need this, I'm going to need this. I had like a, an, an RRV and map set up that weighed almost 50 pounds, you know, at Stardex. And three hours into it, I'm like, this is stupid. I said, soldiers, actual soldiers carry twice this weight. And I don't, I don't get it. They, I, would, I need to be lighter. So I started stripping all this stuff, leaving it at the CP. We had a big bag of the CP. I was just like, I don't need this. I don't need this. We'll be back here for this. So I'll just take this later, you know? And that, I was, I've, I've gone from that 45 pound initial loadout to, I think I've tailored it down to between uh, 22 and 28 pounds. And I, I, I gotta keep it light. The older you get, the lighter you gotta be. So you tell know? me how to line up my gear bag. You help me load oh, it in Jesus. a car. Your gear bag is ridiculous. I could fit in your gear bag. <laughs> Thank you, five. It probably weighs as much too. As I, you know, I bring I mean. everything. I, I'm the go-to guy. If you need a part or something, my bag normally has it. But the if nice it doesn't have it, like today it happened. But the nice major, thing is, major B asked. I need to go use the bathroom. You, you got a TP? <laughs> Searcher. Got it no. in the bag. Uh, no, I didn't. Yeah. I forgot oh, it. You didn't have I couldn't find it. It was, uh, I don't <laughs> I don't know. It would be amazing if you did. Though. Yeah. I so. had, uh, normally I do. I always carry some with me because you never know when you're going to have to go, especially in some of these games. You're going to. Uh, uh, how did you, how did you, you do it when you went to your first final I mean, Did you. Oh, man. Did you I, go ahead? I was, I was, well, I have, I have. Uh, five brothers and two sisters besides me. So I just loved shooting and then which naturally grew into a love of airsoft. But I was kind of a, I'm second from the top, so I'm one of the older kids. <laughs> the privileged so, ones? No. <laughs> the older ones are never the privileged ones. No, Sound the, the baby. The I don't care. Everything. I'm yeah. second, which means I flew under the radar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome place to be, second child. So but if I wanted my friends, because I was kind of the only one into it, so if I wanted them to play with me, which I very much did, because my family's awesome, um, I had to buy the gear. So and I was the only one older with a job and stuff like that. So, I mean, shoot, it's cheaper to buy 
five sets of woodland BDUs on eBay than it is to buy two singles. You know, quick piece them together. You know, yeah, fine. And so I have tubs and tubs and tubs and tubs and tubs of kit that I've acquired in order to outfit. I can put I can put a whole squad in the field. And I know I know you 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 have that kind of dilemma. I I went through that kind of dilemma when when I first started. You know, I made friends on on the new team, but you know, all my other friends that I had said, "Oh, you guys got to check this out." You know, well, we we don't really have the money to do that. So it's like, I don't worry about it. So I went over to I went over to the local store and I was. I picked up a classic army MP5 as a backup weapon or a loner weapon, and I was just like, "Here, you're going to use this. Come out with us." And they had a ball, you know. And some of the, I mean, some of the guys, they really got into it for a little while, you know. And the, you know, they've come and gone, but you know, the the guys that I've met that I really started out with, um, we we have been within the same community, maybe not always on the same team, but we've been in this community for going on ten years in Delaware. And me and my friend Jeff Johnson, we, we had talked about this at the Cove because we had gone on separate teams. Um, because we had just, uh, my guys, we had just bought multicam. We got great deals on eBay for GI multicam, brand new with tags. We were like, oh yeah, we're gonna use multicam at the Cove. And it ended up being a little heavy for Bravo, you know? So the major proposed the question and said, would anybody be interested in switching, you know? Uh, you know, we told them we don't have the uniform, but we'll, we'll go if if that's what's going to take to make the game work. You know, and we, me and Jeff, we came to the epiphany. We're like, you know, every time we do this, every time we plan this, we plan not to go together. Yet we always end up together. You know, and running together as a squad. And so his team and my team and you know my friends from Polar Star. You know, we've. We've been so close, and you know, over the years, and we're just—we we need to stop fighting. You know, we're just going to go together now. You know, and just do it, plan it all together. Uh, it makes it easier, you know, um, because I mean, most of most of the guys, most of my friends in this are uh, former military. You know, all the stuff they've learned in the army, they've taught me. They've taught the other guys on in the group, and and I think that's what's really made us a very cohesive group. Even you know, not playing together for you know months and years at a time you get everybody in the same you know on the same boat again and it's like we look around everybody everybody knows what they're doing you guys remember yeah we're good to go and it, it's just so much fun you know when you have that connection with people uh, and that's why I say it really is like a brotherhood because and we spend a lot of time together outside of airsoft and pretty much that's all we talk about we're really <laughs> nerds about the whole thing you know yeah well I I will um, that first uh, Pine Plains 2, I had, an- I had another person, you know, I had my friend and then another friend who was going to come and dropped on me like a day before. And um, so I had this extra ticket. So I invited my younger brother, Carrie, and um, we, we were not getting along actually at all at that time in, you know, th- that period of... Being brothers, being brothers is tough sometimes. It, it is. I'm telling you, we, we were we were just always at odds. And then airsoft, you know, I brought him to that game. He had the most. He had he had just as much fun as I did, and that's. And it give, it, it, give, it gives you something to connect to, you know, on a, on a different level. It, too. it changed our entire yeah. relationship going forward. We we are we are such good friends. We talk every week, and and. It all started because I I reached out through Airsoft to my brother when we did not agree on anything, mm. and it's just a, it's just a common ground that you can you can have with people and get that brotherhood you know whether it's real brothers or you know I mean when when you go through an event like this and you've done jump through the jump kick the doors jump through the windows <laughs> march through the woods in the dark with no flashlights because you think people you know people are going to find you if you use light um just all that experience no one really understands except the people that are there and so you get you yeah. get the you get the bonds of brotherhood and you the love that i have for the people on my team who have shared these experiences with me experiences with me and, and my prime example of that is is my best friend and hetero life mate uh, he 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 took a grenade for me 
at at at, at uh, Pine Plains Five. Like literally, we were on the back of the ga- of the was it fire hall or the gas station um, over by the cul de sac. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We Good were on fishing. the back of that, and we were we had bought a case of these things, you know, because they, it, this is they were just coming out, and we we're like, oh, these things are awesome. Pull ring hand grenades, we're gonna chuck them like candy, you know, <laughs> and uh, and one came back over the fence. And it landed not four or five feet from me, and he was he was behind me in the stack, and I just I hit the deck, and he jumped on top of me, and I looked at him, and I said, you didn't have to do that. He's like, dude, you got kids, <laughs> you know. I was like, that's that what you're thinking about right now. I said, that's what you're thinking about right now. I said, I love you, man, you know. <laughs> any, any of you guys passed military? I know I'm not. No, and, and that's something that also ties me into this is. Um, uh, I always had aspirations to go into the military, um, and I'm not sure where that comes from. Uh, maybe just from a sports background when I was a kid, but uh, I always respected the military. My I, my family on my mother's side, every uncle and grandfather uh, was in the military. So, um, but because I was so much into the sports part of it, um, I got too big. <laughs> I could not, I would not be accepted into any branch because I was such a large person. And um, and I kind of lost that. I kind of forgot about that uh, over the years. But when I went to the first Pine Plains that I went to and I saw what people were doing, I, I felt like that could fit into my personality. The structure of it, um, the teamwork, um, the, the, just the both the physical and the mental challenge, and um, and that kind of fills that void that I thought I had when I was younger. Um, you know, you talk about a brother and sister relationship. I I feel like I'm I'm in a in a great position here with a father son relationship um, with this sport, and it, it truly is a sport uh, because I, I'll come out of an event or even a, a weekly game, just as tired as I would have come <laughs> out if I was playing a football game or, uh, or a baseball game. The difference is, is that this sport transcends, transcends age. And I can never step onto the football field and play a competitive football game with my teenage son. I would crush them. I, I would never. <laughs> I would. I so good. No, no. So good. I would. I would crush them. But I, w- I could never step onto a baseball field and play competitive baseball with them because they would make me look silly. Their, you know, their coordination is just so much better than what mine would be, and it, it just wouldn't happen. But with, you know, you you could go through all the lists of sports. Okay, and the bottom line is is that. Um, when you have such an age difference between a father and a son or a father and a daughter or even the mother and son, um, y- you don't have that same competitive physical and mental challenge in any other sport that I, I know of right now. And, um, and I get to share that with my son as he grows up. And to me, that's, that's a unique situation. Um, we could get out there, you know, we could be all geared up and we have the same object- objective to get to. We put both the same physical stress on our bodies, the same mental stress on our bodies, and we both feel the pride when we accomplish something that we didn't think we were going to accomplish. Um, I-, I will say that today is one of the most proud days of my, my life with my son because this was his first um, Black Sheep event. And um, to be honest with you, I, I knew he would do well. Um, and everyone that knows him knows that he would do well because that's the kind of kid he is. But I didn't think he'd make it through the full 24 hours. <laughs> and the kid did. 